Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today we are going to talk about different ways of storing data in Ceph. And what we are going to cover is the different ways we can create pools. Because a normal way where you do you have one, two, three, four copies of the same data. So that's one way of storing data and what, when you have multiple copies of the data you have redundancies and something can go down and you don't lose any data. And then we have something that is a little bit more a customs like RAID where you have a bunch of data and then you have some checksum which makes it possible to rebuild the data if something is lost. And that is called erasure coding in Ceph. So let's jump over to my screen here. I'm gonna go through a bunch of scripts and what we are looking at is first we're gonna create a normal one where we have three copies of the data. I have actually ran a cluster where I had a cache layer which just had one copy of the data uh, for a, a period of time and that's fine but of course if you only have one copy of the original data you will lose that data if anything goes down so that's not really a good solution. If you have three copies you could potentially lose a whole host and still have your data left if you have more hosts than three. When it comes to the normal setup, it's very uh, simple to understand. If we check this create normal, uh, we will create three, uh, two different pools and we will create a file system of that pool. And that means that we will create two pools that have three copies each which means that if you save something in a system where we have, in this case, four OSDs. So if we switch over here. So now that I've logged into the system here, we can see that I have four different OSDs on four different hosts. I have three managers, three monitors and so on. And if we look at the specific OSDs here, we can see that we have four OSDs of about 50 gigabytes and if we have three copies of the data that would if you have three OSDs with 50 gigabytes and you have three copies that means that you can store about 50 gigabytes very simple math if you have four you can probably store a little bit more if one go down you have all your data already it just need to um, fix that up so if we go over here and create run the script, create normal, we will create those pools in our system. And so let, let's wait for that a little while. It takes a little while to actually create everything. If we switch over here and look at the pools, we should see them uh, ending up here. So three replicas and two pools here. I actually have one extra pool here, an RGV pool. I don't really know where that came from, but now we have two different pools here with metadata and data and we should also have a file system here yeah so file system that is using this uh, metadata pool and then I have this check script so we can check the size so this is the size that the file system will report so first off I mount the Ceph disk then I check the source and then unmount it so if I run that on this system it will mount it up show me all the file system information and then uh, unmount the file system again so let's wait for that there we go and we see here that we get about 33 gigabytes that's what the file system is reporting to us and that is pretty much what we can expect and uh, then I have created this remove script here which will first off say that this file system will fail. So we fail the file system totally and that is something we need to do in order to remove the file system. Otherwise, if we have any MDS running, it will not allow us to um, take the file system down. So if you have a system with a multiple file systems and you want to remove one of them, you need to fail that file system first. So I will fail it. Then I will remove the specific file system and I need to say, yes, I really, really mean it. This is just a test, so it's fine to do that. And then I will delete the pools 
And yes, I really, really mean it because now we are deleting data. So that is a very dangerous operation. So this is not something that you want to run in your production environment. If you don't really know what you're doing, I'm running this script here just because I want to show you different setups and want to do it in a quick way. So that, that's why I have created these scripts so I can switch over simple. Then now we have tried with three different uh, copies of the data. Then I can create an erasure pool. And creating an erasure pool, you first off need to create a profile and then you will create something of that profile and then you can set up a specific uh, pool with that profile. So here first off I will remove my profile, so my OSD erasure code profile, remove my profile. Then I will create a new profile here, set my profile to 2k1m. And then I have a crush failure domain of host. So what does this mean? K is the value of how many different uh, chunks should your data be split up into. So if we have one object, we can split that up into two data objects. And then we will take those two data objects, create a hash of those two documents, some CRC, and that store that as our M. Which means that if we save these three pieces of data, if one of the pieces are missing, we can restore that piece using one of the other ones. So if we have one M, that means that we have one hash value, so we have one possible restore. If we, for instance, say that the M were five, then we could have five hosts or five pieces of data missing and still be able to restore the data. So now we have two data nodes and two, uh, one restore node. And if we run this script, we also see here that we need to say that we allow easy overwrites. And that's because the file system will not allow us to create the file system with the data pool if it ha doesn't have easy overrides. Uh, allowed and then I can create a metadata pool so that will just use the standard three copies uh, version and that is required for a file system you can't have an erasure coded metadata pool but you can have that on the data but you still need to say that you want to force it because this is not a recommended setup from the Ceph uh, team so if you want to use a Ceph data pool erasure code coded as a file system, you need to force it. If you are using, for instance, an object pool or uh, object um, setup with said object storage, or if you're using RGV, then it should probably be more fine to actually uh, use the uh, erasure coded. So let's create this one, create erasure coded 2.1. And it will take a little while for it to run through the script and create this pool. So the data pool seem to be created. We can switch over here and check the pools. And here you can see that we now have an EFS data EC2 plus one. And then we have three replicas of the metadata. We have a new file system here. And if we go in here and again, check the size of this file system, it should give us a little bit more. So now we have 125 gigabytes to say instead of what we had before, where we only had, what we, did we say, about 63. So it's almost the double amount of data that we can store in this erasure coded version. Uh, let's remove that again and try some other setups instead. So what I've set up here as more tests, we can do a create erasure encoded uh, 2, 2SH. So that means that we have two data and two hashed values. So we can lose two hosts in this case. So if we have four and we have four hosts, then we can calculate to say that we save da one data piece on one host, one data piece on the other host, and then we have a CRC value on one host and CRC value on the uh, fourth host as well. well. So we can lose two, ex two hosts in our system and still be able to restore the data. 
which is pretty cool. So let's run that. Uh, so this is a pretty normal setup for things that are very... Um, it requires to be more safe. Uh, if we look at the, uh, po the um, pools again here, we can see that these are now 2 plus 2. And in this case, when you are creating this up, I wanted to first try, let's say, 1, 3. So I could set up one data and have three uh, different CRCs to restore that data. And that is not a valid setup. That's just crazy. So uh, you need to at least have two data pools and then you can have how many um, of these hash uh, as you want. So now I have set up 2.2. Two. Let's uh, check the size of that. We can see now that we have a little bit less size, 94 gigabytes, but we have more redundancy. So we can actually fail more and still get our data back. And last but not least, let's remove this one and see how the uh, Erasure 3 one is. We have three data pieces and one can be lost. So we have one CRC. Um, so let's check that out. 3, 1. Create that up. Takes a little while to run through and create again. And if we switch over here, we should see the new pools uh, show up here in our web GUI. Uh, it's a little bit slow. We are doing a lot on the computer at the moment. So now we can see what we have a 3.1 and we will create a new file system and it's soon up here. We will check the new size here. And let's see what we get. So the last that we have is 141 gigabytes. So in a system where we totally have 200 gigabytes of data, 141 of those 200 can be used as a file storage. So this is the one that we can get the most data saved, but we can only fail one host. And then if we fail two, we will lose our data. So it's recommended to use the one profile where you have three different copies. Lose one, lose two, doesn't matter, you have a third copy. But in this case, we are using more of the available space, but we have less redundancy. So that's why we can use erasure encoding, so we can have larger data sets stored without actually losing a lot of the space that we want to have. So that's the different ways you can set up erasure encoding. It's very similar to RAID. You can have striped RAID just to get so much data that you can get in the system, but you don't have really redundancy. You can have five uh, plus two, you can have 10 plus one and so on. There is a bunch of different RAID set setups and there are similar uh, equal setups for these systems where you do erasure coding as well. Uh, one thing I can mention here more is when we looked at the erasure encoding, uh, we saw this value that we had a crush failure domain set to host. This is something that you can cr c encode also for your, um, the, your set, normal setup where you have three copies, because you can say that this could fail over a host, so I need all my copies to be on different hosts. That's why I had four hosts now, because I had, let's say, two two set up. I needed to spread them out on four different hosts, so one host could fail. You can change this value from host to rack, room, data center, and so on. So you have failure domains that says that I need to have at least one copy in a different rack in the system or a different data center in order to actually have good redundancy. Because if this data center blows up, you don't have the data anymore, so you need to have a redundant copy somewhere else. Or if you are saying a rack, that rack could go up in smoke, but you still have data redundancy because the rack in the other end of the, the uh, data center could be fine, or one in a different room could be fine, and so on. So there is a setup where you can change how you should spread your data out over the data center. 
So this was what I wanted to cover today. I hope that you found this interesting. I hope that you learned something today. If you have any comments or suggestions, leave them down in the comment section down below. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. If you like this video, give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues. And I really hope to see you in the next video.